Hey, 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 Matt Helbig. It's Friday. What's up, Matthew Smith? I'm excited for this Feedback Friday episode. Yeah, me too, man. It's a good week, and I like what we're doing here today. So, you ready to dig in a little bit? Yeah, this, this is a nice-looking email. I'm ready to, to jump in. Before we get started, I want to thank Email Monks for sponsoring this episode. Need help in creating really good email templates for your campaigns? Discover how Email Monks can make that happen in a snap. They are experts at designing and coding email templates at a great price. If you want to level up your email game, give Email Monks a try. I've been a big, big fan of Design Moto for a long time. Their design aesthetic is just really on point. And they're always doing stuff that is just real clear, easy to see, easy to understand, but but sexy, fun, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, man, their their latest stuff is, is no different. So this is up on... Um, RGE already, but uh, you know, I thought I'd show from here forward. You know, I'd like to use this Blisk Blisk <laughs> browser. But anyway, like we get to see mobile and and web, you know, mm-hmm. at the same time. So anyway, in this in this email, man, there's a lot that I think is working really well. One of the things that's pretty slick is just being able to see a real clear statement of, of exactly what's happening in the view. This is the startup framework and it's updated to Bootstrap 4. It's a product announcement, product launch. Man, they really give it some appeal by using this brush font in the background and like showing me some of specifically what that looks like right away. I can just start diving in and I get to see these like different modules here and how they're uh, hooked up. This is all live text, Ooh. Which is really slick. And a lot of people don't take time to do that kind of thing. And I just find that really appealing. It looks like these are images, which makes sense. And then finishing up with learn more, get me into the site. You've heard me say it before, but to me, let your email be something that just takes you really quickly, tells you what you need to know and drives you to the site. So it's like, it kind of gets out of the way. Here's what we're selling. Here's what we're doing. Doesn't it look hot? Isn't it amazing? Here's here's some more details. Want to learn more? Yep, I do. Or no, I don't. I'm going to delete it, right? Cool. Mm-hmm. Just get out of the way. And one of the things that helps me do that here is they use you know this big bright blue. Yes, that's the color of the CTA below, but the way that they present it up top, it's obvious that's not the CTA. So they're using blue, black, white and colors and that's about it they've got some of these things that are happening here like you know new in a different color fix in a color which is kind of a cool thing to say hey we we actually did some work here i think this must be update you know like that's a pretty cool sort of list to go through and then bam land me with a big bright blue cta and like there there's nothing here competing with that that is what I want to do next, right? And then thank you, good, sweet baby Jesus for not like putting so many links down in the bottom. You don't, you don't need that. I'm not a lawyer (laughs) and I've wanted to, (laughs) sorry to tell you that now, Matt, every startup that I've ever worked at, we've been able to get legal to move our legal into a link. So long as it's accessible, that was all we needed to do. And I consistently see people with these ridiculous footers And it just, it feels totally inappropriate to me. And so I always love seeing something as simple as this. I would say the, if I had anything I'd, I'd promote, it's like, I can hardly read this. Yeah, the contrast is pretty low on that. <laughs> so <laughs> what a terrible email. They have this <laughs> one little place where they could have increased contrast. Anyway, what do you think, man? So feature release emails have been requested on our site a lot. And this is a really good example of that. Just mm-hmm. a very short and sweet email that tells people what's new on the product. I think having um, screenshots in an email is always really helpful. For sure. Could be a GIF maybe and show people them sort of clicking through Mm. uh, the different features that are new to kind of just add some interactivity to the email. Throughout uh, Design Moto's emails, that view and browser link up top is very consistent. Um, So I guess if you know that it's there, I think it looks okay. I like that how they're saying instead of view and browser, like the no images view online seems Mm -hmm. like the right language to use. Um, the single big hero image is nice. And then those uh, bottom parts being live text is really impressive because I really thought those are actually an image. To your point too, the mobile view is a little lacking, but I do wonder if maybe those um, different sections could maybe reorganize in some way to maybe restack on mobile to be a little bit more clear. But yeah, the big learn more CTA, I think this is an example where a plain text email could have been used but maybe would have had less engagement. And I think for Design Moto, this kind of well-designed release note email really matches up to the brand. 
Yeah, I agree. What would you change if you could change anything? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this one's a, a little short and sweet to really add too much stuff. Uh, maybe some module to ask customers for feedback if they have questions about this new release, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, adding some animations on those screenshots, I think would really bring your eye into the email a little bit more. One thing that I might do, I've noticed this a lot. So this email connects for me if I am a startup framework user already. But if I'm not a startup framework user already, then this, which I think this actually came to me and I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's then startup framework updated to bootstrap four is like okay and mm -hmm. and so there there is something there where it's like do more with startup framework now that bootstrap four includes blah 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 give me a specific understanding of why this matters to me you hear me harping again and again on what is the job of this sentence like what am i hiring it to do from the customer uh, or the audience or the reader. I think that like just being like super straightforward like this, it actually, it's not a compelling enough. Like you need to say like, why is this a big deal for it to connect? Testing that would be interesting. But I think from a design or user experience perspective, I feel pretty strongly about that. I think that if we make these kind of decisions in our copy, like it, the net win is that people feel more served. And when people feel served, they, they buy. That being live text, that headline was a good opportunity to maybe A-B test. Um, yeah, that's right. Stuff. And uh, it would be yeah really easy just to swap out that copy with some other maybe more call to action, yeah. acquisition sort of language uh, to get you to try this if um, mm -hmm. you aren't a customer. So that's really nice. I don't think I really understand at a deep level the difference between like a split test, A-B, and multivariate testing. Do you understand that? Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Multivariate would be more than one thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, my understanding is is just that that it's like you're going to try a different funnel and you're going to try four or five, five or six, rather than just a, a true split. Multivariate testing uses the same core mechanism as A/B testing, but compares a higher number of variables and reveals more information about how these variables interact with one another. There's a lot of different pieces of this email, I guess you could even test segmentation. So if, if you know people that are not a customer versus who are a customer. That's a great idea. And then if you want to show a different headline to mm. people that are not a customer, I'm guessing that's a piece of that segmentation. Yep. Or just testing this headline between people that are customers and seeing if the click-through rate is higher. So I think the multivariant piece really um, comes into play when you start changing minor things and testing optimization. But yeah, you have to sort of be careful to make sure that you're not adding too many things. Otherwise, your data can get really inaccurate and muddled with the amount of variance that you're testing. Well, good ideas, man. I really, I like the way you're thinking about it. <laughs> Yeah, just, it's always interesting. Even this simple email like this, there's so many opportunities to test and try out new things. You know, I heard a rumor that there's um, this like gang of like misfit email freaks that are actually putting on a, an event called Unspam. Have you heard this? I have heard about that. Yeah. And I heard it's the best email event in the South. Uh, really? I, I thought it was the best email event in the history of all email, but well, you know, maybe that's just me. Yeah. But maybe, maybe you should check out the website and see for yourself. <laughs> Unspam.reallygoodemails.com. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> All right, man. Well, have a good weekend. We'll talk to you soon. See you, man. All right, bye. If you have any feedback on the series, please leave a comment down below. Hit subscribe to keep up with future episodes. Thank you for giving a listen and letting our sponsors know you love really good emails.